So how did you get to the point where you started, where you got paid, where you're like, oh, now I'm a, now I'm like an actual touring musician. Do, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I meant just persistence, and and I'm sure every young musician probably thinks this way, and I could be wrong, but I just always knew from the time I made the commitment to this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I I, I just knew that one it was going to happen like i wasn't going to give up i knew it was going to happen um but again persistence um i would always try to get in whatever the biggest local band was at the time um and a lot of times those bands already had drummers so i had to kind of like ride it out till something happened and then hey we need a drummer and then if i didn't know those people i would find people who did and be like you got to get me an audition and i just kept one up and one up and um And I was living in Memphis at the time, and uh, I was in the number two biggest local band of the time. The band was called Mother Crush. Um, And again, how I got in that band was their drummer quit. They needed a drummer. I kind of used my connections and got an audition. I got into that band. But um, so the original singer of Saliva, Josie Scott, was in a band before Saliva (laughs) called Blackbone. Him and the original Saliva guitar player, uh, one of them, Chris DeBaldo. Okay. That band was the number one local band. Like they were bigger than anybody and they packed out anywhere they played. They disbanded. They started Saliva. I was in Mother Crush and I was like, man, that's the gig I want. You know what I meant? But again, mm-hmm. they had a drummer, uh, you know, and they were a local band. So um, some time went on, something happened with their drummer and I, knew Josie by my band playing shows with them, but I didn't know him personally like that. We weren't like, we weren't hanging out and it was the days really before like internet and you didn't, you couldn't just look someone up, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I had actually, my son, Zach, my, uh, his mother was pregnant with him at the time. And I was, I believe 26. And when that happened, she was like, all right, look, it's time for you to accept the fact that, you know, you've, you spent all this time, it's time for you to like get a job and, and, you know, a real job and focus on this. You ain't made it by 26. It's over. You know what I meant? So Mm -hmm. I kind of made a commitment with her to her. I was like, okay, you're right. Um, I, I quit the other band, um, committed to that. And, about six months or so, I want to say, went by. And, and trust me, inside, I was dying. I wanted to play. Um, yeah. My phone rang, and I answered it. And it was, hey, this is Josie Scott. Um, our drummer quit. First of all, I didn't even know how he got my phone number. But he said, our drummer quit. I've seen you you play. I, I love, I think you're, you're the best drummer in town. And I would love for you to play drums for Saliva. Um, you don't have to audition or anything. If you want the gig, it's yours. And I was like, is this really happening? Oh. Um, so I, I, I explained to him my situation with my wife at the time. And I was like, man, I, I already committed to like, I'm done. But if you'll let me have a couple of days to figure out how I'm going to like, try to try to c- convince her of this, I, I, I want the gig. Let me, let me, he's like, sure. Take a couple of days. So took a couple of days to get up to even the nerve to bring this up because I thought for sure she was going to be like, you know, no go. So I, I kind of gave her the, the whole story. And she said, you know, if it, if you would have said anyone else, I would have told you hell no, but I know Josie Scott is going, going to make it and you would be dumb not to take this gig. So I was like, the stars aligned. And then obviously I got in the band, we grinded it out for a couple of years and then started getting, big label offers and I, I mean I don't I guess part of it's luck I don't know but um I guess you know when I finally gave up is when it happened it's really really odd that's crazy that's a that's a good story it, it's cool that your that your wife at the time kind of like turned like that too because I would I, I would I thought I that's not where I thought the story was going I thought you were gonna have to say like oh no so I had to you know Tell her to I, did off. Now, <laughs> I probably would have though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But everybody in, in Memphis at the time, everybody knew Josie was going to be a star. It, he was already a rock star locally, and and he just has that whatever it is, he has it, you know. Mm-hmm. So everybody knew he was going to be successful, and and she did as well. So it was kind of like, all right, you'd be dumb not to do this because yeah. you're probably going to actually make it if you if you do this. So 